all happened together, so this is no particular order. Written language is sequential, so to put in a particular order, but they all have been easy. So, easy access to books or print. It's, uh, I wrote an article a few years ago with a colleague. Um, it's not having books in the classroom is like a place of a football without a ball. Um, we, we need books, it's actually fundamental. And we need books in the languages in which children are learning to read. Children need opportunities to read daily. And we do know this from, from reading research in cognitive, uh, cognitive science and neuroscience. But it's, learning to read is laying new, new, neural pathways in the brain. And you can't do that if you're not practicing every day. It's the fundamental basis of becoming a musician. You have to practice every day. If you want to become a reader, you have to practice every day. And that doesn't mean skills. <laughs> about is how we get to becoming a skilled reader. What's the route to becoming a skilled reader? And yesterday we had very interesting debates. Comprehension is the big problem space. That's what we're all concerned about. But there's a pro small problem space in literacy. It's how you become a skilled reader. And if we don't pay attention to the small problem uh, space, the big problem space is not going to happen. And all the research in South Africa in African languages shows at the moment we're not getting the small problem space right. So we need to find ways of marrying the small problem space with a big problem space. And, and literacy is not social or cognitive, it's both, all the time. So let's not get stuck on these debates. Please, it's, it's both, right? And what have I been reading lately? Quite a lot. Um, <laughs> The book by Seidenberg is really very interesting. But you know, that's what floats my boat. I love the, the human mind and cognitive issues. To me, they're so appealing. So that's what I like to read. It's a really interesting book. And also Marianne Wolfe's book. She's all her life, she's worked with dyslexic children and worked with, with struggling uh, uh, readers. Um, the book by Jensen, Teaching with Poverty in Mind. For me, it's, it's all about culturally responsive teaching. And, and how to be sensitive about this and how to give the best to these children. And then the last one has got nothing to do with literacy. It's about the origin story. And it just reminds us we are all homo sapiens. I prefer to say persona sapiens. We are all homo sapiens. And this is what the book is all about. It's the big history of humankind. Not the tribal histories. It's not Russian or Chinese. OK, now I'm just talk about research. Um, Mr. President, thank you so much for emphasizing putting reading out, out there in front. And I do think a lot of the decisions about uh, literacy must be made by people who work in literacy and not by politicians. And we do need to, there are always questions about what counts as evidence in literacy, and we need both quantitative and qualitative. And I just want to point out that the small problem space, the red and orange lines, are kids who are getting the small problem space right. And the stippled lines are most of our schools, in, uh, business as usual schools in this country, they're not getting the, the small problem space right. And you can see the best readers at the end there, the 90th percentile in business as usual schools, those are the best readers. They're reading as well as some of the weakest readers in our intervention schools. So if you want to, your children to perform well in pearls, you need kids who are at that red and yellow line. Thank you very much.